can I take this call really yes, quick? Yes, go this right ahead. This is my sister. Yes, go ahead. And she's trying to. Hey, Mary. Okay, man, I'm meeting with law, I mean, Mary, when I meet with law enforcement, so I'll call you in just a minute. Thanks. I don't have a card. That's fine. Did, che did Chelsea call you? Okay. Okay. Can you let Chelsea know and then make her run Lynn down? Okay, well, tell her to go get Christy to find Lynn. Get any one of the secretaries to find her. All right. Thank you. Sorry to put that on you. Bye. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right. No, sorry. Um, one thing I want to do before we start is I'd like to get a cell phone exam so we can just corroborate everything. Um, let me get a consent, and I got a guy here that's going to do it. Are you going to download it now? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So I'll get to keep my phone? Yes, sir. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, how much attorney-client privilege stuff is on there? A lot. Okay. We do have a taint attorney that's going to examine it before we ever do. What is a tank attorney? A, a taint attorney. They look at somebody who's not affiliated with the case that makes sure that there's... Jim, do you know? Yeah, Can sure. you explain it's it better? Sure, sure. And I, I mean, it's a privileged attorney that, that doesn't... If, if there is attorney-client privilege information, it's, it's redacted or, or extracted by the taint attorney. How do they know who's a client? I know it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, whatever yeah, it is, yeah, it, I, yeah. you know what? But if y'all get some but attorney whoever, client but stuff, that is, you know, would go through me. And so signature. Um, just write your name here. So Alec, I've had situations where they it's say, not a big deal. Give me a list of all his clients or something like that. You know, but a lot of rest. <laughs> you know, I, I think the big thing, Joe, is I mean, when you download that phone, if I don't know if emails come with it or not, because that's probably where all this. Stuff. And we can I and we can actually isolate the the, um, the emails. Yeah, that's probably. Amazing. You don't text my clients. E clients but no, I do. T my text a lot of clients. Okay. okay. I, I I'm not a big emailer. Is that at eleven or twelve? Or do you know? I do not know. Okay. I can tell you that the case for you if you want me to look at the back. It should have a number. <laughs> And what was your date of birth again, Mr. Murdoch? 52768. And the last four of your social. Um, <laughs> Most of the new ones don't. Probably have to open it up. Oh, well, this guy. Jim, you want to witness that for me, please? Yeah. <clears throat> and if you got a passcode or. It, my passcode is. I'll write it on there. So. Start at the bottom nine, go up nine six six nine. Nine six six nine. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, let me run this till my. Where are you from, sir? I'm actually from Barnwell. Oh, yeah? Yes, sir. I got some cousins in Barnwell. I got people in Barnwell, too. Mixon. Um, Mixon Oil? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that was my... Uh, you kin to Dickie Mixon? I don't know. You know, that uh, <laughs> Mixon Oil my Uncle Ray Mixon, and his son Teddy and Bobby and a bunch of them. And then um, Freddie, you know, Freddie Mixon, he was... Uh, oh. I knew Freddie Mixon very well. Yeah, and, and his wife, Anna, and Jill. Goes, Mr. Freddie uh, goes to uh, Elko Church. Yeah, not anymore. He's dead. I mean, he went well, he did. Yeah. Well, you know, I was at his funeral. He had a <clears throat> Tiger Paul casket at the funeral. So <laughs> he was a big Clemson guy. You know Big John Bedingfield, don't you? Oh, I, yeah. Oh, I know John. That's my cousin. Okay. Oh, and Sweet Caroline. John's... Uh, son and my son are the same age they were in school together so you grew up in barn yes sir
right, sir. So he's got it and he's taking care of that. But I get it back. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, sir. Um, so when we spoke the other night, I got kind of a basic overview. Yes, sir. Um, and it was pretty traumatic. That's okay. Um, yeah. I, I know so, you yeah. need to ask me. You ask me what you need to. So I just I, I want you to let's start Monday morning and and take me through your day. Monday morning, uh, you know, did I do Monday morning? Um, my wife and my older son had gone to the baseball games that weekend. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I, I really can't remember what I did Monday. I know I went to work, okay. but you know, I think I was dragging a little bit from the weekend, mm -hmm. and but I went to work. Um, I usually mess around on my farm. And then I go to work. Um, I was at work. Okay. Um, you know. Were you at the office in Hampton? Or? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So I was at my office in Hampton. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I was just at my office doing. Legal work. Yes, sir. I'm sure I can go back and probably recreate some specifics mm -hmm. if you need me to, but. I can't like sit here and recall on the top of my head exactly mm -hmm. what I was working on. I know one thing I was working on um, was we had some we had some big motions coming up in a um, Dominion Energy case. I was getting ready for those, and uh, I was getting ready for some motions. I'm a defendant in a civil case involving my son. I told you about mm -hmm. the boat wreck. Yes, sir. And there were some motions coming up in that on Thursday and I was mostly just getting ready for those things and okay. then other junk. Uh, what time did you leave the house to go to the office? I'm not sure. Uh, who, okay. who all was at the house when you left? To go to my office yes. that morning? Mm -hmm. Or when you got up, who was at the house? I'm sure my wife was. Um, and I can't remember if Blanca had made it out there yet or not. And who was Blanca? Blanca is our housekeeper. Okay, okay. And she comes mm -hmm. different. She doesn't have set hours, but she comes most days. Um, she'll be able to tell you if I yeah. was there when when I when she left or not. Okay. I, I just I can't remember. And so you you went to the office. You did you know some motions. Uh, what time did you leave the office? I left a little bit earlier than normal because my son Paul was coming home. Okay. Um, because he had not been with us uh, during the weekend and he was coming home we were going to um we were going to replant some sunflowers the next day okay. and so he was calibrating doing and getting everything ready um so he got home a little early i left a little early so he and i could knock around and we knocked around for you know just doing things we like to do out there okay. you know we're riding around looking at um, um, food plots looking, you know, look, looking for hogs, a little bit of target shooting, just bullshit. Yeah. You said Paul wasn't with you over the weekend. Where does he, does he live with you at the house on Moselle? Well, I mean, that's his home, but yeah. he has an apartment in Columbia. Okay. Um, and he goes to Charleston a lot of weekends with his buddies. Okay. And and he had been in Charleston for the weekend. Okay. And then Paul works for my brother John. This mm -hmm. is out here. You met John. Yes, sir. So Paul works for him. So Paul uh, decided to go to, he went to spend the night with my brother, his uncle John. They were very, very close. Okay. Um, Sunday night. Okay. And then he worked for John Marvin, and he came home Monday afternoon. Okay. About roughly what time in the afternoon? You know, I would think it'd be somewhere in the five o'clock range. A little bit. It was it was broad daylight when we were. It wasn't dusk, dark, or late. Okay. You know, and we rode. Uh, you know, we just rode around. We rode mm -hmm. around our dove field, looking at how the corn was doing. He. He had, um, he and I had planted corn in the dove field, and he planted the corn in the duck pond, and he was, you know, showing me how much better his corn was doing than mine was. <laughs> and um, we rode around the duck pond. I mean, we just, 
you know, we rode the property. Yes, sir. You know, we just, we rode the property. Um, then, you know, I mean, we, we rode around so much. Um, we just rode. Okay. Uh, probably. We, it was a yeah. good little while. It was yeah. more than 20 minutes yeah. or 30 minutes. Okay. And, you know, was it two hours? I don't know. I'd say it was more than an hour probably. Really wasn't keeping track of time. Uh, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't getting dark. Mama wasn't home yet. She had gone to a doctor's appointment. Um, so, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> just out of curiosity, target practice. Look, y'all shooting. Uh, just a little bottle. You mean what gun? Yeah. A 22 okay. Magnum. Rat shot. I think. No, it wasn't yeah. rat shot. I think he shot. I think he shot two times and I shot one time. Okay. So after y'all got finished riding around, try to take me through the rest of the evening. All right. Um, you know, at some point we were all back at the house together. Mm -hmm. um, Maggie had gotten home. And, you know, we sat down, we ate supper, which we usually eat supper together. Um, so um, the one thing I remember, I don't know how much detail y'all want. So if I start talking about something that you don't need, just tell me and I'll move to something else. The, the more detail, the better. Sir. So Paul has been having um, high blood pressure mm -hmm. and his mama was worried sick about it. So we were actually, you know, this was a, a direct thing, getting him, he doesn't like to go to doctors, making him go get his blood pressure checked. His feet had swollen up recently. Wow. So, you know, that was, it, it was, a, it was a, a big, huge deal. Okay. Uh, you know, we hung around the house for a little while. Uh, I know that Maggie went to the kennels. Um, I don't know exactly where Paul went, but he left the house too. Okay. How did Maggie get down to the kennels? I don't know exactly, but on normal occasions, she would drive, drive a buggy, drive a four wheeler, or very common for her to walk. Okay. How about Paul? What's... Paul wasn't much of a walker, but he would use all of the others. Okay. Um, but it, it, I mean, it could be anyway, okay. you know? I, I don't know exactly. <clears throat> I wish I could help you with that. So, so they left and went down to the kennels. Well, Maggie went to go to the kennels. Okay. And Paul and Paul left. And I'm assuming, you know, I'm assuming Paul left okay. because of, you know, gotcha. what happened. I mean, I'm assuming Paul yeah, yeah. went to the kennels. Okay. Um, and what did you do once once Maggie and Paul left? I stayed in the house. Okay. And I was watching TV looking at my phone and I actually fell asleep on the couch okay and what time did you you know I don't know wake up? exactly what time I woke up but when y'all get my phone you know I think one of the first things I did when I got up was call Maggie mm -hmm. because I was going to my mom's mm -hmm. um, and I know I texted her because I checked my phone and what time do we say the text was Jim like 906. I, don't, I didn't see it. Yeah, I, I got it written down from the other I night. I showed you the other yes, night, yes, didn't I? Yes, sir. I got this. So, you know, I texted her. So I called her just before that. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, she she did an answer at that point. Um, and I left to go to my mom's. Okay. Y'all just have to look. I, I don't, yeah. I'm not sure if I called Paul well, or not. Well, and, and, that, and that's why we're getting the phone so we can nail down the times and, right. and, and everything. Um, so I left, I drove. Uh, well, you know, I'm going to tell y'all this, even though I think it's kind of crazy. You know, I was certain that I heard them pull up. I mean, I was positive that I heard. And, and people don't just come out there. You yeah. know, we don't get, like, passed through. I was certain that I heard them pull up, but I, but they didn't. Okay. Um, well, if you, if you heard something pull up, what did it sound like? You know, I, I, I don't, I can't tell you what it sounded like. I just know that I thought they, I thought that, that my wife had pulled up I or mean, that Paul it, had pulled up. Would it, would it have been the buggy that she normally drives or would it be a car? No, no, I, I, I had the impression that a, that a, a car pulled up, Okay. you know, and 
in. And had you woken up by that time, but hadn't left for your mom's? Yep. Okay. And, and but it wasn't much time in between there because mm -hmm. I left pretty damn close. It wasn't much time between me waking up and me leaving the house. Okay. Um, and when I went outside, you know, There, there's a cat, a wild cat that lives around that house. Okay. I'm pretty sure it was the cat that ran okay. from my car, but you know, I never had the impression it was a person, but there was something. Okay. You know, but I really don't think, you know, I'm just throwing that yeah, out no, there no, because it was in my mind. Yeah, no, that's fine. All that's, right. that's totally fine. I left, I drove to, I drove to my mom's, um, I she, checked on my mom. she lives mom. right out here, correct? She, she lives at Alameda. Okay. Checked on my mom. Talked with Shelly for a few minutes. You know. So um, Shelly is? The caregiver. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, I know that I called some people on the way that I know I returned a call from my brother John. Um, I know that I called Chris Wilson. Um, I know that I talked to Buster, um, so I made a few phone calls Okay. and where was Buster? Buster was in Rock Hill. Okay. Is that he, where he lives or? No, he lives in Columbia, but he just started a new job. He, he's going back to law school in January. Okay. So he's working a little part-time job. Um, with wild wings okay. uh, uh, through January. Gotcha. You know, just kind of killing time. And he was in, um, his girlfriend lives in Rock Hill. She's studying for the bar exam. So he had to be in Charlotte. So he was staying with her in Rock Hill, her okay. and her mom. Okay. Can I open the store? Yes, sir. <clears throat> So, All right, so where are we? All right, so you, then I you left, left your mom's, mom's and making phone calls. I left my mom's and I, I went back home. I got to the house. Uh, I went inside. Nobody was there. I got in the car. I went back to the kennels and, you know. And you, when you went back to the kennels besides Maggie and Paul, did you see anybody, any cars? I didn't see take, anything take right then, no, sir. Take your time. You know, I saw Maggie and I saw Paul laying down. I knew, you know, I didn't know, you know, I knew it was bad. I went over there and, you know, I saw it. Yeah. And, you know, I called 911. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, what, what made you decide to go back to the house and get a gun? I, I, I just think the whole scene had me freaked out. Okay. Did you you take your car back up there, or did you run up there? No, I drove. Okay. And, of course, the shotgun that we have is the one you brought back. They were asking me earlier. Yeah. I'm not sure which one it was. <clears throat> Jim, it was a 12-gauge. I know. Um, okay. Yeah, Ronnie had a question. If it was 12 or 20, it was a 12-gauge. Right. And it was that camo, though, right? Yes, sir. I think it was the uh, 12 um, Camo Benelli. 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 I think so. <clears throat> but that's about all you got, Benelli out there, right? And, and we talked about this a little bit the other night, too. I, I know Paul had been getting some threats and getting some, some being, in, being assaulted from, you know, the boat. Who who stands out in your mind, besides, besides the boat incident, who stands out in your mind that would want to come after after Paul and or Maggie? I mean, sir, I can't think of anybody who would want to go to that extreme, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, he got a bunch of threats, mostly from... You know, uh, 
mean, I have no idea. How would he receive most of those threats? What do you mean? I mean, would, would people call and hang up on them or no, send them texts no, or it wasn't social so much media? That. No, it was, it was mostly like in-person confrontations are the ones that I learned about. Now, I suspect his friends can probably tell you about mm -hmm. more because I doubt Paul told me about all of them. Okay. But I knew about a lot of them. You know, there were a lot of times where people would come up to him and he'd be like, they'd say something about, you know, you're going to tell me who was driving that boat or you, you little piece of shit, were you driving that boat? You know, stuff like that. Okay. <sighs> Who did he go to Charleston with on the boat that weekend? I don't know exactly. I know that, uh, I mean, I know who his buddies are, but mm -hmm. specifically who was on the boat with him, I'm not sure. Okay. You know, but I can give you a list of names of who it probably was. So, Joe, I don't know if you want me to weigh in here. You may want to put your pens down, but um, a good buddy of mine, son, went fishing with me yesterday out in the ocean, and he has a best friend. And his dad's name is Lee Chapman, but yeah, the, the kid said Lee's son said that Paul slept on his couch in Charleston two nights before he was murdered. And so it's, it's Lee Chapman's son. I can get his name. You probably know Lee, Lee's son. I, I don't, but but he goes to the Sizzle. But that's where Paul was. Okay. And I learned that yesterday out on the fishing trip, which is by half the standard. Look cool. I mean, yes, sir. If you could get me Lee Chapman's son's contact information he, there was a bunch of chapman <clears throat> cousins that paul was very close with the closest one being wills chapman and frank chapman wills chapman is his name but i'll, I'll, I'll get you a number one and that frank is john chapman's son and wills is lee chapman's son yeah okay that's where you want and those boys are you know they're just really good boys and friends of paul's and one of them is wills with an s right that's right, right. And Wills goes to the Citadel, which you understand? No, he's graduated from he the Citadel. Oh, graduated, graduated from the okay. And Frank was in the Citadel, but I think he had some kind of, you know, okay. academic troubles. But I, I, I mean, I, I'm telling you now, mm -hmm. I can promise you that, I mean, those boys love Paul. Well, it, it's, it's none of, it's mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, you know, and I, I, I just want to talk to them about their weekend and sure. yeah. Um, I can tell you this, in riding around with Paul, he was his normal bright, you know, just, he was a really great kid. So, being a dad myself, what was the biggest issue you had with Paul when you had, when you had to call him down and, and scold him or correct him? What was the biggest issue you had with Paul? You know, uh, I mean, I, irresponsibility, you know, um, he was ADHD, he was bad about jumping from, and he had so many wonderful qualities now, mm -hmm. but he was bad about jumping from, he'd start this, maybe not quite finish it, move, do something else, and, you know, you'll find out from his friends, he had clothes strung out all over the state, he did that with clothes, he did that with guns. He did that with my boats. He lost. So. He lost what? He, he would misplace stuff or okay. just you know, leave stuff behind, right? Yes, everywhere, everywhere. I mean, he would go off for the weekend. Sometimes he wouldn't pack clothes because he's got clothes in somebody's house. I mean, Paul, Paul was one, he, like, he, he wouldn't understand mm -hmm. how you go out, you know, you and one, you and a girl go out on a date. He, 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 he liked the crowd. And who was his girlfriend? He didn't have a girlfriend right now. Okay. Alex, last time I talked to him was like two weeks ago, although we texted. He mm -hmm. was going to Greenville for the weekend. I, I mean, he had friends up there. Girlfriend of there? No, no. We had a family. We had a family thing in oh. Greenville, and he came up on. He came up. Paul didn't play golf. He came up on Friday and stayed Saturday, and then he left to go to Charleston, and we were stayed another day to play golf. Oh. I thought maybe I had a girl. My my niece 
on my wife's side is having a, a baby. Okay. And we went out for that. <clears throat> and you said on Monday, Maggie had a doctor's appointment in Charleston. And I know we talked about this on Monday. Do you call the doctor that she went to or for what the reason was? Maggie had a couple little things going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I personally think she was going to see Dr. Gordine, but mm -hmm. I'm not positive. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that's who it was. I can find out yeah. specifically though. Her mom, her mom will know. Okay. And you said she and she and Buster were at the ball games all weekend. Yes. With that. With me. With you. And what? What ball games? Carolina, Carolina. Was regional. They didn't make it past those, did they? No. Darn it. <clears throat> did Paul? Well, no. Paul was in Charleston, so he didn't hang out with y'all that weekend. No, sir. <laughs> What time did Maggie get back home Monday night? It was, it was after Paul and I had gone. She was not there when Paul and I left to go mess around. Okay. So, you know, it was sometime after that. So there was a point when, you know, she got back, we got back. When y'all got back from riding around and messing around on the farm, she, was she home or? Yes. Okay. The, so. And I don't believe she'd been home too long when, when. And what's her car? That Mercedes that's out there? Yes, sir. Okay. And you said Bianca had prepared dinner that night. Yeah, Blanca. Blanca, Blanca cooked, Blanca cooked dinner that night because Maggie, Maggie cooks, you know, when the boys are home, or she tries to really for me, but. Um, she wasn't going to be there that day, so she had Blanca cook a meal. How is your relationship with Maggie? Very good. As good as it could possibly be. I mean, you know, we yeah. had our issues, but wonderful. And I'm just trying to understand the family dynamic. I understand you got to do what yeah. you got to do. I promise. What was y'all's biggest arguments? Would would what your biggest are the things that y'all would argue about the most? What would they be over? I mean, we really didn't argue, but the basic I'd say the really the only thing that caused any friction between us is that she was always wanting us to go. And I love her in laws. I mean, they're wonderful people. Mm -hmm. I love them to death. She was always wanting to go there, stay there a little longer than me and the boys wanted to stay. That was really, and, and it really, you know, she'd get really, she'd get ticked off. Yeah. You mean her family? You said yeah. her in-laws, but you mean her family? I mean her yeah. family. Your in-laws, yeah. I mean, we really didn't argue about much. We didn't have much to argue about. I mean, I'm sure there was an occasional thing that came up that we argued about, but mm -hmm. I can't tell you what it is. I can't think of it. enough not to work she was going to make sure she took care of me and the boys and I mean she did everything <clears throat> she did absolutely everything <clears throat> I'm sorry no no you have every right to do that <clears throat> I 
I'm good. You go ahead. <sighs> that afternoon, or during the time you and you and uh, Paul were right. Yes, sir. Uh, did y'all did you go up to around the kennels or anything? Did y'all do anything uh, up toward the kennels? I'm sure we did. You know, my that's our main shop is, you know, right there. But, you know, I mean, we're normally in there for long times tinkering. And I will say that particular day, we, we did not tinker around there a bunch, you know. Okay. When y'all rode around the farm, what were y'all? Were y'all in the truck or? Well, we were actually in two trucks. We rode in one truck okay. and then we rode in uh, another truck some. One was the black one and one was the white one that was out there. Okay. <sighs> Mr. Alec. Yes, sir. You know, the other day when we were there, we, we came in and we were, we were talking with John a little bit. Sure. About, and and you, you obviously got a lot of, I say a lot, you said 20 or 25 uh, weapons. Yes, sir. And do you know kind of what you got as far as any kind of, uh, what kind of weapons you may have? I'm pretty much, yes, sir. Can I know you might not run them all, but can you, can you kind of run down what you, pull us kind of what you had, and what you got, you know, right there? That I own or that's in there now? That you own. All right. That uh, I own. That's in there, you know, or uh, wherever they're at. And, you know, I mean, Paul has guns scattered all over the place. So, you know, some of our guns aren't there. But, so you want to know all of them or you want to know what I think is in my house? Or what was in my house on Monday? Yeah, what was in your house? Let's start with what was in your house on Monday. Okay, whatever was in my house on Monday mm -hmm. is exactly what was there minus one shotgun that I got, that y'all got. Okay. <clears throat> no guns have been moved for, you know, there hadn't been any guns moved in and out of there other than when Paul was home. You know, when Paul came home, he, he would ride around and shoot hogs a lot. Um, what would he shoot hogs with? Most you know, of the time. I mean, primarily he would shoot them with Buster's gun. Because okay. Paul, Paul had a 300 blackout. Okay. And it got, you know, he says it got stolen. <laughs> um, you know, and it's been gone for some time. But anyway, so he would use his brother's blackout uh, a lot of times. So Buster had a had also had a 300. I gave him both one. Okay. When was <laughs> when was that? Uh, About years ago. Okay. More than a year ago. More than more than a year ago. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, but he would do anything. Paul had this, um, you know like a little light that I used um, that night, Paul would take that thing up to, you know, my 308. And I mean, he, he, he was always rigging something. Um, <clears throat> you know, so. Going back. Sometimes shotguns, for, when he would go try to kill the hogs, cause you know, the piglets would be grouped up, but. Normally, he would have a rifle when he went to shoot the pigs. So, all right, so going back to the guns, y'all want me to tell y'all what was in there? Don't y'all, I mean, have an inventory? I, I video yeah. the, the thing. I didn't write down everything that you had. Um, I just took a, a random, just like a recording of what was on the gun rack or on the gun wall in the gun room. Uh, that day and there probably there are some more guns that aren't in that gun room you know I don't know how many but 
Okay. You know, like I do know there's a shotgun in my bedroom. And, and um, I think Miss uh, Katie, Agent Katie, walked with John and, and saw that one. Okay. And I imagine there's probably some in some other rooms. I know that. Um, I think it was the we have two two gun cases, one small one and one big one. And I moved some guns from the little case to the big case just because, you know, her mom and dad were in there and I, I just took all the guns to the back room. But that's after the fact. Were, <laughs> were those guns, would those guns have been in the room, in the gun room when, when we came up there with John? I can't remember exactly when y'all came, but probably. I think y'all came a little bit because it was a good while before y'all came. Yeah, it was yeah, probably two o'clock or so that afternoon before we got here. <clears throat> now, did y'all keep any guns out at the uh, kennels? We didn't keep guns out there, but there were always guns out there. Okay. You know? Um, I mean, and I'm going to be honest with you, we were all a little bit bad about it, but Paul was the worst you know he was the worst he would, he would leave a gun out there he would leave anything anywhere and you know it was not unusual for there to be guns out there did y'all take the um but the, like i can tell you that i mean they told me that the 300 blackout was used in this I, that 300 blackout you know, it was, it was not out there. So y'all, y'all didn't use that for target practice, or he didn't have it out there with him on Monday. No. Okay. No, that's right, because it was in the house. So Paul, Paul said that one um, was stolen or, or lost, and it was some time ago. Did was that reported anywhere? It wasn't officially reported because I wasn't totally convinced it was stolen. Okay. You know, as opposed to lost. But, I mean, you know, I mean, I, there were people told about it. Yeah. I know that I told John Beddingfield about it. Um, I know that I told some other local officers about it, you know, just in case it turned up in a drug thing. Okay but I didn't do an official report. Okay. <sighs> the, and the, the two that you, you bought for the boys, that each one of them had one, and the one Paul lost, is that the only ones that you, you, you have? Well, I'm gonna tell you this. I thought we replaced, I thought that Paul got another one replaced, but Buster said we didn't, but I was certain that we did. <laughs> but, I mean, my memory is it's been gone for a substantial while too. Okay. Do you remember anything about them as far as, were they the same colors? Or? They, they were identical except for colors. Okay. Who had, did, which one was Buster's? Buster's the one we still have. Paul's the one that lost his. Okay. <clears throat> what were the two colors? Black and tan. Buster's is black, Paul's was tan. Okay. Okay. You say you, you thought you replaced it after he lost it for with I'm, another one, but, I'm all but, but Buster says you didn't. I believe that we did. Okay. I mean, there'll be a record of that, won't it? Should be, yes, sir. <clears throat> I know we replaced it. You know, I wouldn't, I, yeah, I know we replaced it because I wouldn't replace it again. Maybe I just think that now, I don't know.
but I'm certain we replaced it. <clears throat> Have you talked to um, CB Row <laughs> since Monday or Tuesday? Yes, sir. Because I know we, we talked about what he had done on the farm. Have y'all, is he still employed? He's still employed because I got to have somebody keeping it clean. But I, I mean, I, I can't keep him. Mm. I mean, he's an idiot. Yeah. And, you know, I know I told you, I don't know why that story seemed important to me the other night. Yeah. Well, I really it, can't see CB Rowe doing, I, I just can't. I, I really do not believe that. Well, it, I mean, it, it's an odd story. It's um, a messed up story. And, you know, and, and I just, being in law enforcement for so long and, and working these type cases, and I don't know the Islington era, area, but talking to Collin County and seeing the property and how isolated it is, finding somebody that's just gonna randomly come up there that late at night that doesn't know the property you know, that's, so I, of course I have to look within and then start working my way out. So you feel like it's not random. You feel like it's intentional. I mean, planned. I, I don't know what to feel right now. And I, I, I hate to say that. I, I don't know what to feel right now. So do y'all have any good clues? All of the evidence that we collected, um, Tuesday morning and we collected additional evidence on Tuesday on Tuesday afternoon um, they collected evidence at autopsy today so we we're, we're trying to put a rush on that to get an answer quick and and hoping that's going to tell us something by evidence I mean is it things you think are going to be helpful <laughs> well I mean the like the shot shells out there the the, the casings um, the DNA swabs that we took from the door handle to see if anybody touched the door handles, um, any other places that we think somebody may have touched while they were out there, um, you know, we're trying to collect DNA from that and analyze that. Um, which, at the conclusion of this, what what I'm going to also ask is that we get a buckle swab, a DNA swab from you. No your, I mean, your DNA is going to be there, no. but we need to eliminate it when it, when it once it's developed. Um, so, you know, we don't need that unknown yeah. and it actually is right. a family member. There's no problem. Um, I mean, we, we have talked to <clears throat> close to a hundred people trying to track people down and we're still tracking people down. And that's why, you know, who, who, um, I'm, Paul was with. I want to tell you one thing while yeah. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Paul was really an incredibly intuitive little dude mm -hmm. and I mean he was like a little detective and I mean Paul would you know he you, you know what yeah. I'm trying to say yeah which leads me to let's go back to Paul right quick while we're on him so we have his phone do you know his passcode I don't and I'm gonna tell you this right now there's a few people I can point you to, yeah. but I can tell you that he was super, super, super secretive with that, I mean, cell phone. I asked his brother if he knew it. Did, did the ones that they got the other day didn't when you, work? I, did y'all get any the other day? Not for Paul's phone. No okay. Sure. I know they got. I know they got Maggie's code. I know worked. Maggie's. Yeah. And 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 it works, or it worked. Yeah. Uh, I I've not gotten it, but there's a lot of people out moving parts that you know may have gotten that information. So we'll follow up on it. If you you believe somebody gave us a code for Paul's, a possible code for Paul's. Uh, you know, maybe it was Maggie's. I don't. Know. Okay. But I'll find out. I I will try to find out Paul's code. Okay. But it will surprise me greatly if somebody knows it. I mean, certainly, 
you know, talking about the investigation, certainly we're, we're looking at every angle, trying to figure out what fits. Um, and we're talking, we're talking to, you know, people that were involved in the boat case. We're talking, trying to track down people that Paul knew and were friends with. That's why I asked who he was in Charleston with. So we can go try and see if they might know something or try to figure something out. Um, we're trying to get into his phone, um, to see if there's any information, see if he got like a direct threat from somebody there. Um, I mean, the people that are here are not the only ones working on this. Uh, we've got people out doing things right now. Thank you. Um, I mean, we're just, we're trying to pull everything in. Um, just the area, Islington, unfortunately, they don't, there's not a lot of people moving around. Um, I mean, I've got, got somebody looking at videos right now back at the office, coming through hours of videos that we've gone out and collected. Well, thank you all. Yeah. Very much. So. Mr. Alec. You don't have to call me, miss. You just I, call I'm me sorry. Alec. Thank you for that uh, Alec, courtesy. <clears throat> when when, y'all, well, when you and Paul got back to the house, Miss Maggie's there, and y'all eat supper, which has been prepared, and you say you said you laid down and, and took a little nap, and when you got up, Maggie and Paul was gone, or did they leave when you laid down? Or before I, you laid I'm, down? I believe that I, I'm not I'm not sure. But they weren't there when you woke up around the nine o'clock mark or so when when you made the call to Maggie to, to let her know you was going to your No, office. nobody was in that house when I when I left. <laughs> So, and just trying to narrow down the, the last time that Paul and you saw Paul and Maggie's when y'all were eating supper. Yes, sir. Up until you came back from your mom's and, yes, and sir. found what you found. You got a, yes, Alex probably told y'all this. He did check for a pulse. Yes. Right, and that and that's why we want to do the DNA. Uh, to to inspect the DNA. Right. 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 I don't know. Yes. When you. When you tried to turn Paul over, do you know if you tried to turn him like towards the kennels or away from the kennels uh, and his phone fell out? Away. I think I turned him away. Okay. Was he left-handed or right-handed? He was right-handed. Where did he normally keep his phone? I don't, I mean, usually in his hand. <laughs> <clears throat> most, most. But, I mean, mm -hmm. It was, you know, it was always on him. Pocket, hand, truck. Where did Maggie carry her phone? Anywhere she could? Yes, sir. Did y'all get fingerprints on her phone? I haven't gotten that back yet. <clears throat> when the when when Paul's phone came out, did you you just pick it up and put it on you know place it back down on him or? You know. Yeah, I did not try to open it or anything. You know, I just, I don't know how I had in my mind that I needed to not mess anything up. I had that, I had that, you know, somehow I had that presence of mind that I needed to not mess anything up. And so, I 
I tried not to. And, and you definitely saw a traumatic picture, and uh, and I know it's not hard, <laughs> or not not easy. I know it's hard. Uh, and sitting here talking today is is tough. <laughs> It's just so bad. I did it so bad. <laughs> He's such a good boy, too. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Go ahead. <clears throat> and but you know the little the little things that we've kind of I understand is is necessary so that we can. We can get a little better picture as to, to you know, to what may have happened. <clears throat> well, I just thank y'all for everything, you know. Uh, yeah. My in-laws, my parents, my in-laws. I, I would like somebody to update me or my brother or somebody so that I can tell them as y'all discover things. Unless. There's some reason y'all don't do that. Well, <clears throat> I mean, they just have so many questions. I, un I understand. And I mean, they may even, well, no, they don't need to do Well, that. I mean, how, I, I know Maggie's mother just had a knee replacement. How was their health overall other than that? You know, they're ailing a little bit. They're mm -hmm. getting on up there. Daddy has some neuropathy, but I mean, they're in good physical health. They, they're in good uh, you know, their fortitude is good. They're just, you know, they're, they're just getting age on them, you yes, know? Sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> um, are, are they in Somerville or are they at the house on Moselle? No, they didn't. They lived in Somerville. Okay. But there's, I mean, they're here now. Oh, they're here in this house? No, they're in Moselle. Okay. Because, um, I mean, I'll go by and, and speak with them and meet with them. Um, if you think that would help? Or... I think that would help a tremendous okay. amount if you would just be willing just to sit down and let them, I mean, you know, hearing from me and John Marvin and Danny and whoever, what little tidbits y'all get, I mm -hmm. just, you know what, I think it would give them peace of mind to know that y'all got a team of people out there on it. Yes, sir. And, and you know, just to really <clears throat> have something, you know, a tangible person instead of being told. <laughs> you got a contact number for, for them? Yeah, I'm getting ready to get that. Okay. Yeah. Her mom and dad are, are just such good people. I mean, they're just doing wonderful all that. Some people. of the old guys are back at the office. Love her so they're much, and everybody we can deal with. It really would make them feel them. good. Okay. What? Um, uh, what are their names? A lot of, um, a lot of technical. My father-in-law's name is Terry. Yeah. But yes, we my mother-in-law's name is Kennedy. And they're Brandstatters. <laughs> And my sister-in-law, who in her, her Brandstetter for me. B R A N, S T E T T E R, and um, then my sister-in-law, who was closest to Maggie in the whole world, mm -hmm. um, is Marion Proctor. <laughs> and her husband is Bart Proctor, and they live in Charleston. <sighs> Uh, do you have a contact number for any? I know their numbers. Okay. But it's in my phone. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> 
promise you, Alex, someone that my life depended on it. I couldn't tell anybody, my mother-in-law or father-in-law. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I, I, I've been the luckiest person in the world with in-laws. I mean, yeah. they are wonderful. Yeah, I tell people. It's, I tell people all the time. It's my in-laws that I like. It's my wife's in-laws I don't. There you go. <laughs> let me let me grab a piece of paper. I'll be right back. his buddy's numbers in my phone if um and you want me to dig them up and they, david i'm, I'm yeah. afford you this kind of, <clears throat> maybe you don't want me to do it like that but I, okay someone sent me will's chaplain's um, you hold number that, please. that i just So we have um, victim's advocate, Miss Marion Walker. Thank you. That's her cell number. Thank you. Here's some information for you on the back. Um, in the victim's advocate program, they, I mean, they help with different things. Um, I think more specifically, what would be more beneficial, especially for you and Buster. Um, is some counseling down the road, grief counseling. You know, I do some assistant solicitor's work. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. you're, you're familiar I'm with familiar it. familiar with the thing. But thank you so yes, much. Mm. Um, I know y'all planned out the funeral today. When is the funeral? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes, sir. Okay. Y'all have well, busy. The, the, we're doing a service tomorrow. Um, Maggie and Paul aren't going to be ready until next week, so we're doing a service tomorrow, and then we're going to have a private family thing one day next week. Okay. Okay. <sighs> um, are y'all doing anything tonight? Because I, I I can run by and talk to Terry and Kennedy tonight. I think the better. sooner you can come yeah. and talk to them, the the peace of mind that that would really help them. Okay. That's convenient for you. So we're just, we're out at the house tonight, but, mm -hmm. um, and if for some reason they go back early because of the service tomorrow, um, that they, they may be staying tonight. They may not be, I'm not sure. Yeah. All, all of their cousins and family on the Branstetter side and the Hubbard side is coming in from Kentucky. Um, and so they may be going back to stay with them. Okay. Um, I'll find out and call you. Do I yeah. have? I think you called me. Yes, sir. He, um, Jim's got my number. <laughs> okay. I gave, I gave him my I'll, number. I'll find out okay. and call you in just a minute. Okay. okay. <laughs> <sighs> you good? All right. Um, do you have any other questions that I might be able to answer right now that we hadn't gone over? Uh, no, sir. It's, I mean, it's, as soon as I get something, um, and if it's okay with you, John Marvin asked me to go through him. Um, That's fine. So I'm not bothering you in case you're doing something. What time What time is the service tomorrow? 12 o'clock. Okay. Where is that going to be? Hampton. What? At the church or? It's graveside. Okay. So if I if I get something around that time, I won't bother you. I'll, I'll wait 1, 1 30 and... If you get anything important, you can call me anytime. Okay. Anytime. Okay. Uh, uh. 
are y'all going to publicize the service or is it just going to be for family and friends? No, sir. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be open, but I got TC and those making sure there's no, I don't want any press anywhere near. Yeah. So, no, they, you know, they, they don't deserve to be near. They're going, they're, they're going to make sure, you know, <laughs> and the town of Hampton that, you know, there's no press. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, y'all got my numbers. Um, I think you said with that phone, it's gonna take a while. It, it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go check on it. Y'all go back in the house. Uh, me, when it's done, I'll bring it to let you. Let me do the. Oh, the buckle. Yes. Buckle yeah. Let's quick. do the buckle swab right quick. Right. You can sit where you have yeah. Alex, and I'm, I'm gonna step out, but I got. What? Up oh what? The buckle. It's, it, the buckle swab. Oh, yeah. oh. Do I need yeah. to spit out my tobacco? Uh, yeah, it might be better. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, I'll, I'll get everything together. I'm doing the consent now. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and... Where, where's your gloves at? You didn't grab gloves? Mm, <laughs> I did not, but I know one of these vehicles has got gloves. I'm not in my... Do I need to get out? No, sir. You keep your seat right I'm there. I'm gonna stay in this AC then. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I, I got the other part. Uh, you hear me, Dave? What's up? I got the actual one you can write on the envelope. Oh, okay. I really appreciate you taking the time to come meet with them. Not a problem. This is what I do. You ever have any dealings with a sled agent named Jarrett Maffitt? No, sir, I don't. You said Maffitt? Yeah. I know him. He lived in that um he lived in that little green cabin up at my property. Okay. Okay. Does anybody live in that now? No, the kids use it like in the summertime or okay. when they're having parties and stuff like that, you know. Um, but when I first got it, Jarrett was on the highway patrol and he lived there. Okay. And he was stationed in Hampton County. That's been a while ago. Right? It's been a long time. He's a good boy. I think he's a real good officer too. I already got that one filled out. All he's got to do is tie. Oh, the consent? Oh. Sorry about that. Got a gnat flying around, about to fly in my contacts. <laughs> You, this is the consent for the buckle. Sign right there for me. Where? Right here. Date. No, I already got, yeah, got the date on it. Alright. Just throw them up on the dash. Sorry. Please. Drop something. I just dropped that card. I got it. I got, I got it. Okay.
this is you keep seeing. Keep seeing. This is the seal swab. No, it's I'm gonna go inside your cheek. Uh, there's two swabs. You just do what you need to do. All right, there's two swabs. Uh -huh. We go do one on the right cheek, one on the left cheek. When he finished with that envelope, we'll just seal them back in there, and I'll get you to sign it with me, okay? Inside your cheek. You got it. Right. I just don't have gloves on my hand, so I don't want to. Do you have any gloves right there, please, sir? My right feet. All right, my left, your right. <laughs> Done. I'm gonna yes. seal, I'm gonna yeah. seal that envelope and let you initial it if that's okay. Whatever you need. Break these tips off because uh. it don't fit. Uh, he filled out the envelope, so I'm, I'm just going to seal this up. You got it? Give me these grabs on. What's that? Evidence tape. No, oh, I got, got evidence tape. I'm getting a uh, sharpie. I'm going to set this right by you, Mr. Kidd, so I can see what I'm doing. Piece of your gun? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Today is the tenth. Jim, where do you live? I'm in Columbia. Okay. But I'm out. Uh, if you just like initial right there beside me, you seal it together. Right here? The yes, right okay. there on that red line? Any, anywhere you want to set it. Initial, anywhere on that table. I don't have to go very far to go by this. this. I rode by where they were playing that PGA golf tournament. That was a weird looking scene out there. I don't know if y'all rode by there. You bet so. No, I haven't. 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 I haven